Hello and welcome to Caregivers First, the show brought to you by SCAN, helping active adults stay informed and empowered. My name is Lavelle Jones. Thank you for joining us. We have a great show for you today, so we're going to get right into it. In the United States today, there are about 35 million drivers who are over the age of 65. By the year 2030, there will be 70 million. So it's important for us to maintain safe driving skills as we age. It's also important for us to recognize when it may be time to limit or stop driving altogether. I'm so happy to have guests today who are gonna help us discuss these important subjects. Arun Bhattacharya and Erwin Horowitz from the AARP Driver Safety Program. Arun Bhattacharya is the state coordinator for the Driver Safety Program a volunteer position he's held for 10 years. Arun is responsible for directing all aspects of the program in the state, and he's been with AARP for two decades. He has a PhD in chemistry, and prior to his retirement, he served in senior executive positions with several major corporations, including Mobile Chemical, Occidental Chemical, and Brown and Williamson. Erwin Horowitz is the Deputy State Coordinator for the New Jersey Driver Safety Program, and he's responsible for all operations within the state. Erwin is a Rutgers graduate, and he retired from the infrastructure technology field in 2010. Since joining AARP as a volunteer, Erwin has held several leadership positions. Arun and Erwin, welcome to Caregivers First. Thank you. Thank you. Arun, I'm going to come to you first. Tell us about the AARP Driver Safety Program. How long has it been in existence? What are the things that it covers? And how does that program help older drivers stay safe on the road? Um, we have it. Uh, we uh, celebrated our 40th anniversary last year. And thus, this is our 41st year. We offer a six hour driver safety course, which is approved by the Department of Motor Vehicles in New Jersey. We also offer online course. This course is approved, offered in English, Spanish, Chinese in New Jersey. The participants learn safety strategies and other relevant technologies necessary to improve their driving behavior. They become better drivers and reduce crashes on the road. They receive a certificate after completing this course that enables them to get discount in their car insurance. It is estimated that in, we assist them in saving almost a million dollars every year. Besides the driver safety, we also offer other programs like CarFit, SD Tech, and we need to talk WNTP. That's terrific. Thank you very much, Arun. And um, I'm going to just throw this question out uh, to both of you. Um, research shows that in general, we older drivers are safe drivers. Uh, however, as we age, we are at greater risk of injury from accident. So I'd like to have you share with us, what are some of the changes that we experience as we get older that can negatively affect our driving skills? Yes, Lavelle, I think I, uh, I, think I can take that. And um, we teach in our class, our second unit, second or third unit, uh, does the changes are, are immense. There, there's a whole unit on changing and uh, it def definitely affects our driving. Uh, we are safer drivers as we get older, but unfortunately we get more fragile. And because of that fragility, what happens is we, we, uh, there are more deaths and, and injuries because of that. The changes usually re revolve around vision, vision and hearing loss, you can have uh, degenerative diseases, things like cataracts and glaucoma or macular degeneration. Uh, another subject or another area would be depth perception. That is judging the distance between 
you and an automobile either next year or coming down the road. So what's going to happen is if you do not have that depth perception as sharp as it used to be, think about making a left-hand turn, turning left, and not being able to judge correctly. Like you can see what can happen there. Peripheral vision changes is, is an, another area where we uh, affect changes that could affect our driving. Uh, you need to be able to see as much as you can out the sides, out the front, and out the back, which leads to another problem, which is decreased flexibility. Think about turning your head, moving around. Uh, and uh, what, we, what we fail to realize sometimes is that driving is a very physical activity. And that physical activity stems from the head to the toe, meaning the hands grabbing the wheels, uh, controls on the car, hand, brake to, hand, uh, to, uh, to uh, 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 gas, you know, th those kinds of things. So and you throw those changes on top of decreased slowed reaction time, which means that you are reacting slower to any event. And if you have to stop, that slowness is going to cause more accidents and more problems. So those changes all together affect us as we age. Thank you. And let me just ask a, a follow-up question because you mentioned uh, the need for flexibility in order to, I guess, do things like uh, turn and look over your shoulders to see if someone is coming up on you. So how important then um, as we age is maintaining our uh, physical condition? Talk to us a little bit about that. Right. Well, absolutely. I mean, um, also, in, again, in the course we, we used to have in one of the older versions we had, actually, we in the class, we'd have people stand up and stretch and do things. But obviously, that that's really kind of we got, got into a little trouble with that. But at this point in time, uh, flexibility and, and exercising is extremely, extremely important. I mean, there are assistive devices that we can put in cars to make people a little bit more comfortable. Seats that come, you know, cushions that would come up on your seat. Uh, uh, bars that you can slip into the, into the bolt there that will let you get you out of the car. But if that gets too much, then you become an unsafe driver. So exercising, getting out, walking, doing all those things to keep that mental and physical acuity, that's going to that's gonna go a long, long way to help you drive safer longer. Terrific. And one final question um, uh, to satisfy my own curiosity. Are there any uh, physical or uh, probably more so mental conditions that um, would uh, you would recommend folks consider not driving at all. Uh, I'm thinking of things such as um, Alzheimer's or dementia. Uh, how do you, uh, what do you say about those types of conditions? Well, it all depends on how, um, and Arun, maybe you, you want to, maybe want to add something, but you know, those kind of conditions are, are, are at, the t at the very end of some of the, um, the um, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, mental conditions that we talk about. So um, somebody with Alzheimer's, you know, they, could, they might be able to drive, they may get lost, but that confusion on the road is really gonna cause problems. So um, uh, that leads to whatever conversations you might want to be able to have, which is what we wanna get into and talk about because those conversations are important once you realize that those kinds of conditions exist. You're right. Thank you so much. I might add one more thing on this level. Yeah, yeah, it, it does happen in the initial stages of Alzheimer or what have you. Uh, yeah, you can probably function, but as you age and all those conditions deteriorate, then I think you have to be more careful and get into some sort of uh, assessment. Terrific, thank you both. Let me ask you uh, a question. Uh, we are talking about um, unsafe driving. And let's say that uh, someone wants to find out for herself if her driving is unsafe. Are there any tests that she can take or any type of self-assessment tools that she can use to find out what the status of her driving is? Yes, there are, Lavelle, you know. Uh, there are some do-it-yourself uh, programs using computer, online, or print resources are available. You can use those to do your self-assessment. Then there is a judging your driving. This is a quiz that uses 
to a point system to see if you are having a driving problem. And lastly, which is not quite a self-assessment, but the person who is most familiar with your driving <laughs> is the one who is sitting in the passenger seat. So those are the uh, ones I would say, say are good assessments. All right, thank you very much. Um, Erwin, I want to ask you a, a question about um, identifying unsafe driving skills. You know, as we, as we live longer, we may in fact outlive our safe driving skills. In fact, statistics do show that drivers who are 85 and older, they, tend, they do have the highest fatality rate per mile driven. So my question is, how can we tell if an older loved one is an unsafe driver. Uh, what are some warning signs that you can share with us today? Yeah, yes, for, for uh, Lavelle, sorry. Uh, yeah, fragility, that's the major issue. So the four, really four basic categories of uh, warning signs come with physical capabilities, cognitive capabilities, then you've got the actual poor driving skills themselves, as well as then the evidence of those poor driving skills. So let's take physical capabilities first. What about not being able to hear what's going on outside the car? Trouble uh, moving from the gas to the brake, like we had discussed, difficulty turning your head, again, that flexibility issue and delayed reaction time. All of those physical capabilities or decrease in those physical capabilities are all warning signs for the driver. And as well, like Arun, Arun said, the passenger who's in there, if there is a passenger, and in some cases there aren't, but in, when they are, they're the ones that will notice that, all right? The cognitive capabilities that we also mentioned decreased in confidence. There's another one that's related to sort of com cognitive capabilities, but you know, it, as, we, as we age and we get a little less certain on the road, the problem is we become, we become really, really uh, less confident and we're a little more scared, which means we slow down maybe. And that slowness also is an, ind an indication that something may be going wrong. So poor driving skills, trouble making turns, parking inappropriately, hitting curbs while making right turns. I, I want to tell you that there was one point where I had started to make right turns. I started to hit the curb. And I said, okay, that's, that's it, I'm done. But again, you have to take this all with a grain of salt. After a while, I realized that I wasn't making my turns wide enough and therefore it went away eventually, right? So, you know, everything has to be taken with that, with that in mind. It, you know, I have to look at it over time is what the issue is really. So then once you th think about all those warning signs, there are evidence of all of that happening, and that has to do with, and I think you probably know this, scrapes or dents on the car, right? All of a sudden you say, wow, look at all those scrapes, look at all those dents, what happened? All right, is either to your grandfather or whoever it is, uncle, aunt, or whatever, all right? You know, garage or mailboxes being hit, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, frequent close calls being ticketed for moving violations, multiple vehicle crashes, again, with a grain of salt, but Still, you know, they're, they're all there. They're all there to see. Thank you so much, Erwin. I really uh, appreciated those comments. And now we're going to pause for a quick break. We will be right back, so don't go away. You probably already know that rehabilitation is a must for successful recovery from surgery, injury, or serious illness. What you may not know is that you're free to choose where you go for rehab. In Monmouth and Ocean County, the compelling choice is CARE One. Where you choose to go for rehab matters, and with CARE One, you have four convenient locations to choose from in Monmouth and Ocean Counties. CARE One at Jackson, CARE One at Wall, CARE One at Homedale, and CARE One at King James in the Atlantic Highlands. At CARE One, you'll work with a team of experts to develop a plan based on your needs and goals. You'll have the full support of caring, compassionate physicians, RNs, licensed therapists, and nutritionists dedicated to helping you recover successfully without setbacks at a pace that makes you comfortable and successful in meeting your rehabilitation goals. Once you take the first step with us, you'll never look back. Call 
99 Care One today and come for a tour. Welcome back to Caregivers First. We are talking with Arun Bhattacharya and Erwin Horowitz from the AARP Driver Safety Program. Arun, I'd like to uh, ask you a question, and it relates to the meaning of driving. Uh, as we all know, driving is a way to maintain our independence. And so limiting or ending one's driving is certainly uh, a sensitive topic. It, it can also be an emotional topic. So I want to ask you, how should we approach someone about his unsafe driving? Well, we have to see whether those warning signs we talked about, they persist over time and are getting worse. Uh, things like failure to stop at the stop sign uh, does not follow the advice of doctors <coughs> to stop or reduce driving due to some medications. Uh, does not curb driving even after the use of alcohol. I have to <laughs> add that also in the picture. And uh, must have discussions. You know, discussion is very important. And uh, to go further, understanding that it's an emotional concept and it represents a person's independence. In the first step, uh, we have to try to have the conversation before it becomes a problem. That would be better. And ask the driver if there's anything medically going on. And in addition, have not just one conversation, have multiple conversations. Yes. And uh, let me ask you, uh, how important is the messenger in, in these conversations? Or in other words, how important is it to have, uh, I think you've described in the past, having the right person in the room. Talk to us a little bit about that. Very much so. I'm glad you asked that. The right person is probably somebody in the family or a friend. You know why? Because that person can relate to it, him or her better. And if, and in, my, in one of the earlier versions, I heard that daughters are a very good uh, person to be in the conversation because they have they have the skills to be with that person and handle that person better. Terrific, thank you very much. And it, it is such a, a sensitive topic, um, but it's one that I think as we ourselves get older or we see loved ones get older, uh, we may very, very well have to face having those discussions. So these are, are good tips and, and good information. Erwin, let me ask you, um, Talking about having a conversation with a loved one, how should we plan? There's actually some planning that is involved. What are some of the things that we should consider as we plan to have that conversation? Well, I think as you, uh, as you think about the conversation, you know, I assume based on what Arona said, you know, the person knows the one, the driver that uh, may be in some difficulty. So uh, knowing that person is, it goes a long way to do that. You also, I think, have to be very supportive of the changes that that driver has already done because uh, I really think that uh, even though you've noticed it and you don't think he or she did not, I'm sure he know he or she knows it, that there is something going on and being supportive of things that they may have done already, uh, things like uh, assistive devices to help them through whatever difficulty it is. So maybe talking about that is a good, a good maybe opening line into the conversation. Um, so, you know, that kind of thing, uh, trusted source, like Arun had said, is really very important. At some point, it's possible that a formal assessment might be necessary. I mean, you might want to consider uh, going, there are organizations that will give formal assessments, almost like a redoing a driving test with a little bit more emphasis on, on what may be going wrong. Uh, so that may be another, another area. And uh, the other part of conversation with somebody like that or something like that is really maintaining a respectful attitude and thinking about it in the context that you might be next. 
So if you think of it, bring it down personally to you and say, well, what would happen? Because it's an independence thing. It's uh, if somebody is going to be take away my automobile, that's a lot of independence. And we really have to think about that very, 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 very carefully as we talk to this person. So think about it before we actually have to force them if, you know, that's really an end resort to take the keys away. Yeah. Can I add one more thing to that, Loya? Uh, it is good to use I rather than you. In other words, mm. I think that you need some help, not say, oh, you should stop driving. So I sentences are better than you sentences. That's a good point. Thank you, Arun. And um, both of you have mentioned um, knowing and understanding the warning signs that you've seen. How important is it when you have these conversations to actually be prepared to share examples of the warning signs with your loved one? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would, uh, you know, like I, I, would, I would definitely give them a story of my hitting the curb you know, and uh, other things that has happened that have happened to me on the road. So identifying that way with the individual sort of gets you a little closer. They, they gain a little bit more confidence in knowing what you, they, they, they think about you. Again, if it's a friend or a family, they know that person. Um, I will say that I, 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 I agree it has to be a, 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 a has to be somebody that they know. The, the thing about it is sometimes, and not all the times, you, you have to assess the situation, a stranger may be better because they don't feel as embarrassed to talk about what they're, what's negative, negatively happening in the car with them. So maybe a stranger could be better, but that, that's really a personal decision uh, that should be made by the person who's making the assessment. Yes, that's, that's a great point um, because uh, it may indeed be that uh, hearing um, this information from someone who is not uh, let's say a close relative, sometimes that may in fact be a better way to go. It's all about having a person um, in whom that loved one has trust. So I appreciate those comments. And I also want to follow up on what you both said, and that is uh, not only should we not be judgmental, but we also need to listen to our loved one. And I think that's so important. So I thank you for um, mentioning that as well. Uh, I'm going to throw out another question, and uh, either one of you can answer. And uh, this, uh, this question is based on something I remember from my, my working days. And I used to always hear, well, don't just bring me the problem, bring me the solution. And so when we are considering approaching a loved one about their unsafe driving, how important is it for us to also present them with some positives, some alternatives. What do you think about that? And I can take that question. For some reason, I lost my video, but I'm going to st keep talking. Uh, there are lots of options available. Uh, first, of course, is the local paratransit, uh, then the Uber and Lyft ride-sharing resources. And remember, uh, for vehicles that we drive these days, say, 15,000 miles a year, an average car owner spends almost 8,500 a year or 700 a month, uh, according to AAA statistics of 217. Uh, then there are the services like the GoGo, -Go, Grandparent, and there's a new one from AARP Driver Safety, which is piloted as Mobility as a Service, M-A-A-S. That could be used. And finally, of course, friends and family, uh, local sponsored transportations from nonprofit groups and uh, any disabled transportation services. Great, thank you very much. And I want to throw uh, something in as well. Walking is a good alternative. <laughs> I uh, actually uh, have a friend who for years uh, has taken public transportation or walked 
wherever she goes within the state. So that's always an, an option. And I encourage people when I talk to them that consider walking if that's something that's possible. But um, all of the suggestions you made are really good ones. Uh, you know, we can reach out to our local governments because they have a lot of services for uh, seniors senior citizen centers as well. So uh, lots of good alternatives. And I think that's important when you are talking to someone um, to give them options that they uh, can consider. So thank you so much. Uh, I, we have talked a lot about um, some and just some of the wonderful information that is contained in the AARP driver safety program. So I would like uh, to give you uh, an opportunity to tell us if uh, someone is interested in pursuing that driver safety program or do we need to talk seminar? How can they do that? Tell us where they can go to either learn more about it or sign up. Well, the best, I think the best way to run is that, I mean, <laughs> Lavelle, is to go to the uh, aarp.org if you're interested in the uh, driver safety program and uh, at the classes or go to aaarp.org slash drive, and that will bring you to a website that will then, you'll be able to look around to see the online course, the, the classroom course, and other things, including uh, the SD Tech, the new 90-minute uh, course that we have, which is free, uh, that everybody can take online or classroom. Uh, for the We Need to Talk, go to aaarp.org slash WNTT. And that will take you to some information where you can eventually sign up and have a seminar if you really want to proceed to the next step. And is, is there a cost for either for the AARP program or the We Need to Talk seminar? The driver safety course is uh, the online course is a little bit more, but the AARP driver safety classroom course, which obviously because of the situation we are in now is being canceled and is not active until January 1st, possibly. And uh, the cost of that is about $20 a month for an AARP member. And uh, the online course I think is about $24.95 or $25. Then we need to talk, that's a good question. I don't, I think that's free, right? Um, yes. Right? It's free. A run? Yeah. Yes, it is free. Yeah, that's free. Okay, that's terrific. Thank you so much. And um, I want to um, use the uh, remaining minutes of, of the show to just uh, ask both of you um, to share any comments that you have that you want our audience to take away. We've been talking about the need to maintain our safe driving skills as we get older. Are there any other recommendations um, within your program that you want to share? I, I think just mainly, I think these are caregivers that we are a uh, main audience, uh, and uh, I think to let them know to be aware of, of, of who they're caring for and be aware if they're driving what is happening to be more sensitive to what what's going on and uh, that would be a major thing for them to to really uh, really hone in on that's yeah. true. and Arun any parting uh, words I can't think of anything else Laval I think we have covered just about everything just be safe and be and look around and see what's going on uh, everybody can decipher for themselves when is a good time to uh, continue driving or not continue driving. So, so those are pretty easy to figure out. And if not, we can always see some help. Terrific. Those are really good comments and recommendations. And I thank you both. Uh, we are out of time for today's show. So many, many thanks to Arun Bhattacharya and Erwin Horowitz from the Driver Safety Program. You have given us a very important informative and enlightening discussion. I want to thank you so much. And many thanks to all of our viewers for joining us today. I do hope that you found the information valuable. And if you did, please share it with your family and friends. Please join us for the next edition of Caregivers First. And until then, stay safe and take care. Mm -hmm.